I wasn't guilty of that, right? It was a literal fraud. But how do I prove it? I wouldn't have been able to pay my bills. But I remember I had $7,000 and I looked at my bank account. And I was like, holy mm -hmm. But I do regret doing this. I messed up. So I think it's like the next month, that's when I bought my car and I put a $6,000 car payment. And I regret that so much. Hey, hey guys. guys, welcome back to another episode of the Jalty Podcast. We are back, you guys. I am so, so sorry. Like there's actually no words in the world that can make up for the fact that we ghosted you guys for a total of nine days. No podcast, no Jadley vlog, no Jacob Macias vlog, and no Natalie Cuevas vlog. And we actually do have a very good explanation this time around. And I just want to say I am so sorry. And thank you to everyone who has been reaching out and like, Nat, like we can't live without your vlogs. Like it actually really like gives me a slap in the butt. And before we get you canceled know? for not posting for nine days, I want to give my apology too. Here's my sorry. I am sorry. It's not my fault. I was just behind the wheel traveling across the country once again. All right. That's what my excuse and my apology is. Yeah. So. Let's break it down for them a little bit of what has been going on in our life. We're going to catch you up. We're going to give you a full, full breakdown <laughs> of our life. We know you have been confused because our stories are like literally here and there, here and there. Yeah. But this is a little breakdown of our life. So, <sighs> wait, coffee. <laughs> so, okay, we started off our road trip from going to California, moving, going to Utah, right? Sorry. That was the beginning portion of our road trip. You might have thought it ended there. It did not at all. The second portion be be uh, belongs in someone else's mouth. Ah, man, I love coffee. Um, <laughs> so we uploaded our last videos when we were in Utah. And we were missing the most crucial vlog in the history of vlogs. This vlog truly, I think, has been my favorite vlog of the summer it's the vlog where we go up to idaho wyoming and montana we go to yellowstone we go to grand teton we go horseback riding in montana and it was like we woke up at 3 a.m and drove four hours to our appointment at 4 a.m like we had the most adventurous four days of our life with my parents unfortunately not edith and paws but my parents did come up with us and we had the most fun time ever and we haven't been able to drop that video. There was just so much miscommunication. Like our editor um, thought we were referring to another video. So she edited like the video after. after. So then that video didn't get edited. And then that video had so much work. It was a lot of footage. So like she took a pretty long time editing that video because it had so many components to it. And it was just such a good vlog. It was like literally ultimate family vlog. In that video, I could describe it. It's like one of my favorite vlogs because if you watch it one time, you're focusing on one person, right? But if you watch it again, you focus on a completely different person in that episode or that video. It's just even funnier. Yeah. Like... I was looking at Tito for half the video, looking at you for a little bit and myself. I'm like, bro, we're all dumb. And it's funny because the video itself really, really, really like shows kind of the way our family vacations go. Like that's literally the way like me and Nelly cling onto each other's hip. Like Tito doesn't care about nobody. And then Jake is just kind of like also like a little bit on his own. Because me and Nelly cling on to each other, and then my dad and my me, mom are no. just annoyed with us. Yeah, no, no. Me, your dad, and your mom get to the... We're in the same boat as, like, being annoyed of you guys. And then Tito's in the back on his phone just playing games just the whole time. Just doing ride. whatever, <laughs> like, does not care. Um, if Edith and Paws are in the mix, usually Edith will cling on to my mom's hip, and Paws and and is Paws, just... No, you me and, and Paws, Paws will be going, going You and Paws other. will cling with each other. Yeah, but when because it was just us, it was just, like... Me and Nelly and then everyone in the car trying to throw us out. It was just the most <laughs> iconic fun time ever. And I'm so excited to do more trips with my parents, um, which brings us to our next conversation. But I haven't finished telling you guys the timeline of why we haven't missed anything. So let me run it down really, really fast. Where'd you leave us? We were in Utah. Yeah, leaving Utah. Leaving Utah. So we leave Utah and we actually underestimated how much 23 hours actually is. We thought it was 18. To begin with, Nat said it was 18. From the beginning, I told her it was 22 hours, Nat. And she didn't believe me I, until I don't know the why. day we left. You know what? I might have just routed us from California. I don't know why I thought it was 18. But no, it turns out it's 20. It was 23 after. Like 24 with all our stops. But we ended up leaving late because there were so many technical difficulties leaving Utah. Which my car, we need to speak about my car afterwards. There's so many technical difficulties. So we didn't leave till what, babe? Like 12? Yeah, our checkout was at 10 p.m. We left at around like 11, 30, 12. But 
mainly because we bought a little extra things along with us. Yeah. So in the, from leaving California to Utah, barely anything fit, right? We had a little bit of extra room. So we're like, all right, let's buy a couple things. We could take it to the next stop. Nah, we brought a little bit too much. Yeah, like the truck was like really, really not, not working anymore. Honestly, Jake, we should have just bought an RV because every, <laughs> when we leave here, we're going to have like more stuff. And then when we leave wherever we're going after this, more stuff, it's going to get to the point where we're just going to have to get the, you know, like the ski box, just shove stuff up there. <laughs> a ski box on a truck is crazy. You're not supposed to? No, you're, you are, but it already has a chunk for you. I want a ski box on my range. That would be so fire. That's like the ultimate, like, you know, like when people buy G wagons and then actually use the G wagons for what they're meant for. I love seeing that. When you see a G-Wagon, like, on a hike or something, I'm like, I like you guys. Because that means they have money. Dude, because they're not, they're not taking care of their baby. They're, like, actually using they're it for using what's it, for. They're buying a $200,000 vehicle to go off-roading. That's <laughs> how I know you have money. Because normally people buy that vehicle and, like, never take it out of their garage. Speaking of that, where we're at right now is where one of the most famous people that does that to their cars lives. Isn't that crazy? I didn't know that. He lives here. Liz, he's two houses down. Nah, man. Imagine well, whistling diesel. <laughs> he lives in Nashville, apparently. Here? Yeah, probably on like the outskirts or something, but he lives here. That guy's a menace. He makes my heart hurt, so I don't watch his <laughs> vlogs. Uh, <laughs> I love his vlogs. <laughs> no, it hurts my heart. I know it's for content. I get it, but it's just, it hurts my heart. Anyway, so what we're coming, shit doesn't fit. We leave at 12. Um, basic our, math. Our bike racks fall completely, almost falling to the street. So we had to fix those. Uh, a whole bunch of mess just stuff. so much stuff and so you know we realize hey we're really not gonna make it to our next you know <laughs> to the place where we're supposed to we're in tennessee right now um we weren't if you're watching the podcast you just get the inside scoop we moved to tennessee <laughs> <laughs> we'll be here for around um seven more weeks uh you'll see it all in the vlog but when we're on our way here, we're like, yeah, there's no way we're doing 23 hours after we left at 12 p.m. So we're like, we have to make a pit stop, buddy. And who would have thought that it actually takes forever to get from you all of Wyoming? Because we basically cut all of Wyoming um, and we stayed in Nebraska. I don't have many kind words to say about Nebraska. So I'm going to say very few words. Just... Yeah. I'm going to say zero words to protect y'all in Nebraska, to protect myself, right? I don't like Nebraska. That's all I'm going to say. We stayed in a, we stayed a night in, a, in Nebraska in a hotel, though. And we you woke know what up. it is, Jake? What was it? You passed through Wyoming to get to Nebraska. Dude, Wyoming and is just a top-tier <sighs> state, Nat. There, you can't beat Wyoming. If you haven't gotten a chance to visit Wyoming, you have to go visit. And we weren't even, like, going to, like, the touristy spots. We were literally just passing through the No, but, the okay, state. remember when I went to Wyoming, like, last year and i hated it okay because hear me out so i went to wyoming but i went to Sh cheyenne cheyenne i think cheyenne, it's called. Cheyenne. so that's where i went but there's not really much to see there other than just like flatlands but wyoming up towards montana and like towards idaho it is the most beautiful even idaho okay the most beautiful place maybe ever. i'll take back what i said about nebraska because like we just literally passed through nebraska literally it, nebraska looks like some of it, like on this side, looks like Wyoming where like Cheyenne is. Like that, because flat land kind of. But you just, Jake, you go from seeing the beautiful Wyoming and then it's just flat land in Nebraska. So you're like, oh, this sucks because you had such a high looking at all these trees. And then you enter the other states, which are a swamp land, literally a swamp land. Because you, you probably didn't see a tree in like. In, in hours, I haven't, I didn't see a tree going from, where were we, Nebra going from Wyoming to Nebraska for hours. It was mainly like little yeah. rocks and stuff. Maybe creeks here and there, but yeah, no trees. <laughs> and then you enter, where did we start seeing the trees? It was in Missouri, I think. Missouri? Missouri, bro. Oh, we saw a dead monkey on the side of the road, and that's how I knew I was in the jungle. Dude, this place <laughs> is a swamp. Anyway, we ended up stopping in Nebraska at a hotel right there, right where you enter Nebraska from like... <sighs> not in the city, not in Lincoln. We went to Lincoln afterwards, but um, right where you enter Wyoming, there's like a little city right there. And it was basically just a bunch of people with RVs, trailers, camper vans, like everyone who was at that was, hotel was just like, it was a piss off for everyone. 
Yeah, there was a bunch of truckers. Ellie boaters. was pissed. Boaters. Yeah, there was kind of like everything. We stayed at a, what was it? A hotel? Uh, Ameri- Hilton. A Hilton. No, a Hilton. Hilton. I love me Hilton. Like Me too. The Hilton breakfast the next morning. Yes. Oh my god. So gosh. good. You go in, it's free. Pancakes, OJ, and you call it a day. Like, <laughs> I, I d- love it. So yeah, when we were, we woke up early the next morning for the breakfast and I couldn't like resist not taking extra food with me to the road trip because we have been splurging on food while I was driving because like one, it takes me like hours to drive and I get hungry yeah. and two, it gives me a little bit of energy. And so we didn't mention this part. We actually walked in to get a room like because we were like, OK, it got dark on us. We need to stop. And we on, we were going to sleep in the truck like we're like, fuck it. Like mm-hmm. we'll recline the seats. We'll sleep in the truck. We'll be fine, you know. But I was like, let's just go inside of the hotel and they maybe they have room. So we went and they had a room. So we got a room. Um, and then we like low key snuck the dogs in from the side door <laughs> because you had to pay extra to bring dogs. And I didn't want to pay the extra money. So we like Jake got the key and he went through the back door. <laughs> we were on the side. <laughs> and we went up the stairs, not the elevator to not run into anybody. And then our room was the first one next to the stairs. And you said, I, yeah, I had to go check in and you went and go sneak in, whatever. But you said that the dogs were barking or something. I didn't hear them. What happened? When? When when I was when you're going up the stairs. Oh my gosh, bro. Okay, so we're trying to be sneaky, right? And Ellie and Thea are pretty good. So I was like, okay, like, you know, heal and let's go up nice and slowly. So we're like literally about to open. <laughs> so I'm gonna open the freaking door, but Ellie and Thea have this habit that I have since trained it out of them. Okay. They didn't really have a tra- we're not really fully trained it out of them. They're just kind of scared now, so they're better about it. But they're very used to like going up to the door because they're trying to get through it and they don't give me space to open the door. Does that make sense? (laughs) But I was so stressed out because we also didn't have their leashes. So what I did was we had our bikes in the back. So I unhooked the little leash that we use to run with the girls on the bike. And it's probably like two or three feet long. (laughs) So you have to be holding them like with your arched back and everything. It's literally like this long. And so I had both of the dogs literally arching to hold them. <laughs> and I'm just like so stressed. And we're at the, you know, we're, we are at the fourth floor now. And I'm like, we're here already. We need to get in. And they're like trying to get through the door. And I didn't, I wasn't thinking. So I was like, oh, so I just opened the door and it gets Ellie's paw. <laughs> and Ellie screams. <laughs> and I'm like, what the? So and I shut the door again. And then Ellie's like, and <laughs> dude, so then this time. So That's now, so now Ellie doesn't want to go through the damn door because she's scared. So I open it and Thea's still trying to rush through. And I was so mad. I was like, Thea, get back. And keep in mind, like, we're trying to sneak these damn dogs in. But I'm over here screaming in the hallway because they're not listening to me. And we had them on a harness. Like, the dogs are, they, <sighs> that's a whole other story. So I'm, like, trying to get them through. And then Thea's, like, pulling me on the inside. And I'm holding Ellie with the little ass leash on this side. She doesn't want to come through the door because she's scared that her foot is going to get hurt again. And I'm like, Ellie, please, come on, come on. So and the I, doors are heavy. They're, you know how heavy those doors? They're like the fire-resistant, fireproof doors. So I'm like, oh, my gosh. And then I hear, like, the ding. And that's Jay coming up on the elevator because he went, <laughs> like, the other way to get us. What did you go? I don't know what I got. I think you brought the luggage up through the elevator so you didn't yeah, have to climb right. up the stairs. Uh-huh. Jay comes, and then Ellie hears Jake, so she goes through the damn door. And then we get into our room, and I'm like, oh. I never thought we were going to make it. This dog is screaming. Thea's like trying to go. And we finally make it. But into mind the room. you, we just got back from probably like a, how long? Like an eight or nine hour road hours, trip? Nine hours, yeah. Nine hour road trip. We didn't, get, we took the dogs out one time or two times to go pee, put them back in the car, kept driving. And they are full of energy. So by the time they're in the hotel room, there's people above us, people below us, because we're, I don't know, people below us, because we're on the top floor. Them. And. Like, I'm like, oh, yeah, let's go. I, I can finally relax. I lay on the bed. <laughs> and, dude, all of a sudden, I just hear, like, the like a loud boom. A boom. And then I just look down, and I see the dogs running around. I'm like. You know that pose when they put, like, their butt up in the air and their two legs like, down? Ah. That When they do that pose, brace no, yourself. No stopping them at that point. So, for the next, like, two minutes, they're running around, and we're trying to stop them. And Ellie thinks it's a game. She, like, bites my arm, and I'm like, no, no, no. <laughs> it's the funniest thing ever. They were ever. so cute. They had so much energy. I felt so bad, but I was like. I felt like a bad mom. I was like, damn, I'm, I'm literally a piece of shit. But I was like, no, they need to just hang in there because once we, you know, made it to Tennessee, I was like, they're going to have a huge yard. They have a huge yard here. I was like, please, please just chill. But no, they they went at it for a bit. And then after we kind of calmed them down by putting them, on, putting them on the bed, 
and we slept but the thing is that anytime someone would like walk down the hallway they would wake up and bark so like <laughs> multiple times at night i was like ellie no back onto the bed and it was just this whole thing and we, we really couldn't sleep because we were also worried about leaving too late so we woke up at 6 a.m brushed our teeth we didn't even have toothbrushes on us, so we had to call the front office. We we're like, can we borrow toothbrushes? I had makeup on. I wanted to sleep on my makeup because I didn't have face wash. We had nothing on us. Our truck was packed. And if you know what a packed car looks like, you don't want to unpack for a damn toothbrush. Like, I'd rather not brush my teeth. I, I am packed, sorry. I packed all of our, like, necessities and toiletries in the front of the uh, the trunk. So and we have on the top. cover. Yeah, everything's on top and squishing it. And it's, like, 10 p.m. when we got there. So, like, we were not going to start. And we had the dogs with no leashes on. Dude, it was it was a <laughs> nightmare. So, so, I was like. And then that little a little girl walks past like, Mommy, why don't those dogs have leashes on? Dude, I. <laughs> or they need to put them on leashes. They should be on leashes. She should be on a leash. She's, like, running all in front of their parents. I was so <laughs> mad when she said that. Because, like, you know when you're really stressed out? And, like, first of all, my dogs are not going to come at you. Like, they're not going to do that. They'll never leave me unless I tell them to leave. So, <laughs> The fact that this little fucking prick is like, and openly said it too. I saw her. Shouldn't they be on leashes? I saw her in the morning too. Did you? Oh my god! I wanted gosh. to, I wanted to like sparring kick her face. Dude, you know that she's one of those kids that just cries for no reason. Like those smart ass kids. And she's like, shouldn't those dogs be on leashes, mommy? And then she's in the front. And then the mom's like, come here. come." Here. Like the mom was embarrassed because that was so rude, dude. I, we're stressed out. Kids are so brutally true. Dude, we were just like, my makeup is just like everywhere. We were in the car for 10 hours, nine hours. It's freaking, we, ha we don't have a room at this point. We didn't know if there was going to be a room. The dogs don't have leashes. Like I feel gross. It was just not. And then this, uh, and the Ellie doesn't want to go poop. So before we can go up to the room, Ellie needs to go poop. Cause if not, Jake's gonna have to bring her back down. And then that's another sneaking the dogs around. When we're not supposed to have the dogs. Oh man. It was, yeah. it was a nightmare. Yeah. The next morning <laughs> we got the breakfast from the Hilton and then we ended up leaving. We got a couple of stops. We did only a couple of stops for coffee and anything, but that was like a really, really long drive from there. That was so okay so we were gonna do the rest of it which was gonna be 15 hours okay? i could have done it like i feel like whenever i drive for a long period of time i just put my podcast on chill and whatever and every gas stop gives me like another three four hours so like a, a gas stop is a like a like a little nap for me i guess and we took one gas one or two gas stops and then what did we do did we, we stop stopped at in lincoln yeah so we stopped in lincoln nebraska and then we got some mighty schools and they were the worst thing I've ever had in my entire life. They they used, or I don't know what Nat asked, just uh, asked for like, like I, So I asked for aguachiles. And if you don't know what aguachiles <laughs> are, it's basically like shrimp that they cooked cut. in lime. Yeah, they, they cook it in lime. And then it has like a sauce, like a green, usually it's green sauce, but not green sauce. It's just like literally blended um, like all kinds of green, different peppers with just some stuff. Anyway, that's supposed to be, I watch this, right? They literally got, you know, the, the lemon bottle you see at the store or like the, from the, the corn man, the corn yeah, man yeah, yeah. has a squirter. Okay. They open, they literally put that on shrimp and then put some chili flakes on top and gave, I was just, it, and it spilled exact, everywhere. The exact same way. Like just that lime juice. Some chili, chili flakes, flakes and, that's, and it. that's it. That, no salt, no pepper. Like, just like that. And we waited like 30 minutes for this stuff. And I had the biggest seafood craving in my life. That's why we went there. And I was so But mad. to be fair, the tacos were good. They, could, they didn't mess up on the tacos. The tacos were good. Yeah, that place... Oh my god! That's like an uncultured person making a Mexican dish, and they just <laughs> dude. But you know what's crazy is that that place was very authentic. Like everybody in there was like construction workers. Um, everyone was speaking Spanish. Like the waitresses all spoke Spanish. Like it was very authentic. And I just wanted some Mexican food, bro. And I was so mad. The rush hour hit different. <laughs> yeah, it was. But the tacos were really good, and we got cheesecake, and it was really, really good too. But we wasted like thirty to forty minutes of our life there for no reason. Um, I wish we would have gone to like the other. Another restaurant in Lincoln. Um, Lincoln's like a city. It's nice. It's like brick. We didn't really get to explore it all because we literally we were just passing by. Um, but we ate there and then we headed off because initially we were supposed to do the 15 hours. But then we just we now, decided I, to I wasn't communicating with Nat, by the way, like how and how I was feeling. I was just telling her to put, uh, put the next location, put the next location. And then that's what she did. Yeah. So then I went on Airbnb and I was like, I didn't want to do it because... We've just, Airbnbs are so expensive. And I was so like, expensive. if we can just make it, we already have this place paid for. But then I went to go get the address and we didn't have the place booked till the day after. <laughs> so even if we did the 15 hours, bro, we wouldn't have a place to stay. We would have no place to stay. And I was like, oh my gosh. And it would just be way cheaper if we stayed like somewhere that wasn't Nashville because Nashville is super expensive. So I was like, let's just, I'm just going to find something else. So I was like, let's just make it fun. So I found this like off-grid cabin in Missouri. It's in the French village and it's a beautiful, beautiful Airbnb. And the 
best Airbnb that we have stayed at in a really long time. Literally 10 out of 10 stars. It felt like we were in Bali. It was like literally Bali and we've I'm, never been to we've Bali. We've never been to Bali, but every every YouTube video that we've seen of Bali, it looks like that. Yeah, it, and the vibes were like, like, all you hear is birds tripping, bro. Like I would, I'd be so happy living there. It was a tiny house. So it was a tiny house. There was a couple of them lined up. It was up. containers that they converted into living places. Oh yeah, they were little, Sheds, not containers. Yeah, sheds. they were sheds, like little like small barns and they have their own amenities. So they had like a campfire, they had swings, they had uh, a nice heated pool. And in the back of each one of them had like a view to like a jungle, but I was, I was so scared because we got there at night and man, seeing that dead monkey when entering Missouri, I was like, there's probably monkeys, bears, mountain lions, everything in that jungle. So I was like, as soon as we got there, unpacked, uh, my necessities, I got the toilet sheets actually. And then, yeah, we unpacked there to get all, cause we needed a shower. Dude, dude. Like, that was the only place I would have showered. <laughs> oh man. Dude, we needed a shower and that was perfect because it was just us, so there was three other containers or sheds, but it was just us at the property, and we tore the truck apart for that place. We're Look, like, hell no. Looking back at how we did our van life, I don't know how I could have went, like, days without showering. I think I went, like, two or you three days. You didn't have another option. That's the thing. Here, we had a shower. You know what I mean? You just, honestly, humans are so, like, picky, but when it comes to, like, you not having another option, you just got to suck it up. Because when we were in the van, you literally <laughs> didn't have another option. If we... We either showered, right? But then we wouldn't have water to brush our teeth the next morning. So it was like you had to really pick and choose. And when the water was like freezing cold, that sucked. Washing dishes. And you had to suck it up. Like there was no (laughs) other. That's why I'm like sometimes, that's what I'm saying. Van life really changed our life because sometimes you're so spoiled. You're like, oh no, I want the biggest shower in our new house. And I want the whatever, like the biggest water heater or whatever. But it's like we literally took cold showers, Jake. For an entire two weeks, and we probably only took like four showers the in hard, the t- whole two. The weeks. hardest part about it was like the water would be warm, but out of nowhere, like a cold spurt of like three or four seconds of cold water just on you. Jake, that for sucked. me, it was like three to four spurts of hot water. The rest was cold. <laughs> <laughs> it was so bad, but I loved it. Van life was one of the most like amazing experiences. So it, that I would definitely do it again. Even like when we were traveling, I love traveling. We stopped at a gas station. I got a mac and cheese cup. We got hot water <laughs> and Nats, back on the road. Dude, Nats, it's the funniest thing. Like you guys don't understand. I don't know if all girls are like this, but they're like little, little kids. I swear, <laughs> bro. The only thing that makes her happy is a mac and cheese cup and like a drink, a coffee or whatever drink she gets. And then she's quiet on the road. She was putting her headphones on and she had uh, the Heartland playing. Like I watched like ever. eight episodes of Heartland. So let me give you like a little scoop on that. So Heartland is like an episode where they have like the same characters, like the whole seasons of them <laughs> filming it. When I last started watching it, these kids were like young. There's a little kid on there. And then I seen her uh, like an episode at night in one of the, it was either the hotel or the Airbnb. Like the, uh, the, one of the teenagers had like a beard and everything. And I'm like, nah, how, how many episodes did you watch? And it happened to be like a couple seasons at well, least. Babe, you got to think about it. We drove for 23 hours and I watched Heartland the entire time. <laughs> I did not go to sleep once. I was watching Heartland the entire time. My headset would die and I'd go into my shocks. And after that, like I would be charging my headset and I'd just be like, I was literally watching Heartland all day long. And. Still to this night, she watches Heartland every single every night. Every night. It's my most comforting thing in the world. It's such a wholesome show. Like, it's I so just miss wholesome shows. I, I like that show because I don't even watch it, like, as much as you, but I could pick up on another episode, a random episode, and it's still good to me. <laughs> it's so good. It's good. It's, it's like Gilmore Girls. Gilmore Girls and Heartland are the most wholesome shows because, like, I was a sucker for, like, the Vampire Diaries and Teen Wolf, like these were my shows, right? But there's a lot of um in those. There's a lot of fiction. how do I explain it to you? Yes, like a lot of fiction. You right? can't really relate to other stuff rather Correct. than Heartland. You could relate to you wanting horses since you've been a little baby. Yes, so like Heartland and Gilmore Girls, they're like a real life of a real person, and like I low key want to be them. So it's like I don't know how to. Explain. It's not relatable, but it's like what I want to be. You know what I mean? I don't know. It's just such a good show. Those. Those two shows are like, if you're looking for new ones, Gilmore Girls and Heartland. And like, hang in there in the first episodes because they're really, really blurry, but it's fine. It, it gets so much better. I love those. So, yeah, that's all I was doing. I was just watching my shows. And then Jake, I would like randomly check in with him because I didn't want him to fall asleep. Um, so when we found out that we didn't have this Airbnb, I was like, damn it. So I booked that cabin, middle of nowhere, best place <laughs> ever. We wake up the next morning and I'm like, I'm going to take a dip in this pool, bro. I'm going to take a dip. So we take a dip. Jake didn't want to get in with me. I stole his shorts. What I really liked about that Airbnb, though, is that 
the check-in was at like 4 p.m. or whatever, but the checkout was at 12 p.m. Yeah. Rather than like 10 a.m. like regular uh, Airbnbs do. And they actually let you enjoy the entire property with those extra two hours. Mm -hmm. Those extra two hours let us do so much more. And it was just relaxing. Yeah, it was the best place. Ever. It was the French village in Missouri. I don't know what else it was called. Yeah, me either. But beautiful, beautiful, beautiful place. So then we only had four hours to get to Nashville from that Airbnb. It was just like four and a half maybe. But that was like piece of cake compared and to the 12 he was doing. Yeah, and then leaving at 12, uh, 12 p.m., four hours from then is just like you're ready to check in your Airbnb already. We're not going to be early or anything. Yeah, so we were able to take our time, take drone shots, like really enjoy it. We stopped at the gas station, got our mac and cheese cup. It was just such an awesome, awesome, awesome time. And then we got here to this place and um, we will only be here at this place for a few days because we're staying in a like remote um farmhouse on like 50 acres and it's gonna be like just us for six weeks stay tuned for those vlogs there's gonna be so many cool vlogs we can do camping in there literally camping in our, in our own property <laughs> <laughs> i don't know how i feel about that i'm sure it's like bear country out there gator country just don't even talk about gators because as soon as i seen the monkey i knew everything was going downhill from there when you yeah. you know you're bad in a bad area when there's a dead monkey on the side of the road. Now, it wasn't a little monkey. That monkey was like a like half of your body, and he was just dead. I seen his long curly tail. It was like a white and orange striped monkey. It was what crazy. What if it was like a stuffed animal? Nah, nah that was I'm not, not going to doubt you because I really, really, really don't know what's out here in these woods. Even it you searched swamp. it up. You searched it up, and it says, yeah, in the St. Louis County, there's monkeys. Yeah, we, we passed through St. Louis, Missouri. Um, that place was huge. And we passed through Kansas City. That was really cool, That was too. cool. We seen the stadium. That was super, super cool. We've Shout out all the Swifties. We've literally... We, oh, is that her man's song? Yeah, her man's team. Oh, we passed through so many states, and it, it has been just such an awesome, awesome experience. We got to go through Kentucky a little bit. Um, I just want to go up to Kentucky and do some shopping because hashtag no sales tax. <laughs> Is there actually no none at all? No. What about in Tennessee? There's some there's sales there's tax. There's sales tax, but there's no state income tax. Oh, damn. What so about you just live here and drive up to buy shit <laughs> and come back down? <laughs> Finessing the system. Like Oregon and Washington? Yeah. Um Yeah, it's been it's been so much fun and I'm really excited for our next place because we didn't really unpack here. Like literally everything's in boxes just because I was like, what's the point of unpacking just to literally repack in a few days? So we just have everything kind of like on the side um, and we were just going to spend Fourth of July here and we got to experience some of Nashville. But it there is nothing in this world that could have prepared me for the humidity in Tennessee. Why did nobody tell me? Let alone the bugs, dude. The bugs here are insane. I swear it's like you're a magnet to them. If I was a boy. No, I mean, if I was if I was Nat and there's boys, it's like that's how addicted the boys are to to, to you. I mean, to the, the flies are to you. They don't leave you alone. They don't. They literally. literally don't. Like, we if tried I, to have a cookout. If I show you guys the back of my leg, it's either a bugs outside or we have a spider in our bed. But, but I don't want to think about that, so don't say that, please, because I will not be able to see But we strip the sheets and stuff and wash them and nothing. So Yeah, but, like, babe, every day we're waking up with new bites. It could be that we're spending time outside and... Honestly, I have bug spray. We just haven't put it on. But no, dude, this is crazy. There are so many bugs because it's literally swampland. Like, it is so humid out here. And there are so many trees. And what the heck is Hold that? up. 6-1. Hold up. I'm oh, actually going to get detail. that. Oh, that's your detail. That's your detail. I booked you a detail. You booked me a detail? Yeah. Nah, what the heck? Hold up. Let, wait, we'll be right back. No way. All right, sorry, guys. We were having a little bit of an interruption because my girlfriend actually surprised me with the detail. By the way, that truck has been abused a, abused for so long. Today is getting like a like a daycare. No, what's that called? Self-care day. Self-care day. I had to get to go get the oil changed, the tires rotated and everything. I actually bought two new tires for it. Did they say Ooh. you needed it? Dude. What did they They say? didn't even have to tell me. I knew I needed it. I just didn't really? know. Yeah, I just didn't know if I wanted to upgrade the rims or anything on it. But I was like, nah, I'm just to be honest. I'm just going to get the tires. But yeah. yeah, the back two tires were like balded in the inside and i'm like yeah i knew it i just didn't want to look i didn't want to look I didn't we drove 20 hours of bald tires you ass <laughs> nah they probably got bald from those 20 <gasps> hours what did they tell you uh that i did i did need uh new tires and i was like yeah i know but she was like if you're gonna be on the road again then just wear them out even a little bit more but i'm like nah i'd rather be safe. Nah, change those bitches right now <laughs> if, if it rains we're, we're spinning <laughs> we are toast for sure okay so and you ordered them right we're gonna have to come back yeah, we're going to have to come back. We have to come back anyway because my car is in the shop. And no range slander will be tolerated, so don't you dare. Before, you will be blocked. Before we do with the range slander, let's talk about the range. That's, no, the slander that someone did on the range already. 
<laughs> so we had to transport it from every spot that we've been because we can't drive both of us at the same time. Or I don't know about we, she, she can't. I cannot. <laughs> so we had to transport it, right? How long was the drive? I mean, they had to transport it 18 hours or 22 hours across, right? Listen to me. When we tell you that they messed up this car so bad, the interior is white. It came back brown with black spots everywhere. Outside of the wrap, it had very dark spots with like scratches and everything, like oil scratches. Like they didn't care. Mm -hmm. They weren't putting gloves on it inside that uh, when they were going through the back of the trunk to go in the driver's seat. They were stepping all over the seats. It was horrible. And like Dude. it was so unprofessional to the point where Nat messaged them. We got into come, a text fight. <laughs> and they come and like text her back with Wait, like, can I share what, what happened? Go ahead, go ahead. Okay, okay. So basically all that happened, right? And then I hadn't seen that my car was ruined up until like the next day. So I took pictures of everything. They literally got my headliner dirty. And if you're a car detailer, you know how hard it is to get the headliner grease out because what it was was like dirty and oil, right? And I'm just used to people taking care of myself. Like when my dad moves anything for me or he does any job for anybody, like my dad, they he makes sure that him and all his workers wear gloves. Like they make sure that they put paper on the seats. Like they're just, I'm used to people taking care of your stuff. You know what I mean? And not even just that, but like you literally take your car to an oil change and they'll literally put paper all on your seat, on the floor. Like you take care of other people's things because they're paying you for service, right? Anyway, so the last guy that transported my car, he got my like my car was fine. Like he was super careful with my vehicle. Like he made sure that my car was not dirty. Like he just took such great care of my car. So I was expecting that same thing all over again. Right. But these dumbass guys stepped on all of my seats with their dirty ass shoes. Like they didn't even care to wipe it down. When Jake told them that there was, cause he was the one that signed off on my car. And when he told them that it was dirty, tell him what he said. So I was like, what are these spots over here? There's spots in the inside of the interior. And he's like, I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't know. And I was like, all right, what's this? And he's like, I don't know. And I come out because they brought the car and I was uh, I was out of, I don't know where I was. I think I was shopping, but I came and they were dropping off the car already. And I see them like wiping off the car on the, gre the grease spot that they couldn't wipe off. And I was like, what the heck? So I parked the, yeah. the car right behind them and I check on what they're doing and they're wiping it off. And I'm like, dude, what the heck is this? Like, is it, it looked like a, like someone like banged into the car with like a big rusty hammer because yeah. it was a big dirt, a uh, big circle spot that was like full of nasty stuff. And I go and help. And I'm not even supposed to be doing this. I didn't get paid for anything like this, you know? And Your I grab attitude, a towel. though. I grab a towel and I just use water and I start wiping and wiping and it comes off slowly, but you can still see scratch marks. So I don't know what that is at all. But the, the, the wrap is still there. It's, it's fine, I guess. But the inside is what's like annoying because he was just like saying he doesn't know what happened when clearly his hands are dirty. He was probably touching and grabbing it. They broke her uh, her speaker inside of her car. Uh huh. But I have no way to prove it. So like I can't even tell him anything. And I'm so mad because this was such a nat rookie mistake. But they broke my freaking speaker on the inside. And my thing is that when they were probably trying to go from the back of the car to the front, they like, grabbed onto and it and kicked they kicked it. Or it. Something. Yeah, that's what for sure happened because there's no other reasoning for it. Which now that it's at the shop, I need to call and tell him to fix that. I should. Oh, it's yeah, already right, yeah. there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so, but that's like, dude, all of my seats, you could see their shoe marks on my seat, on everything. and The dude, handprints too. It's literally, like, it's fine if that happened, but they took the courtesy, like, when Jake told them, like, hey, like, what the hell's, like, the car is black. Like, what'd you guys do? They could have at least, you know, gone inside of their car, got in a towel, wiped it off, right? No, the only reason they did that on the exterior was because they knew that if that didn't come off, I was obviously going to charge them for it because they literally damaged my car on the outside but the inside like they knew they could get away with it like what are we gonna do you know so when jake told him he's like oh i don't know it just gets dirty that is not okay like you didn't even try to clean it so i was so mad right because the car now i have to pay for a detail that's gonna run me like 300 dollars because i have to do like the full interior so they could do the headliner steam the seats and all this other stuff and i try to clean it with my own leather wipes like the actual seats so it wouldn't stain it um and i got as much as i could but it's oil so like the headliner, I don't know what's... The guy literally who's right here doing Jake's truck, he's the same guy that's going to do my car. So we'll see. I'll, I'll surprise you. Posted. I'll surprise you with the car wash since you surprised me with, with one. That one. <laughs> yeah, I was like, it, honestly, it is what it is. So I texted him, right? And I sent him all the pictures. It's like 50 pictures of it, right? Um, I basically told him like... I'm so disappointed in the car transport. Uh, I'm just going to kind of skim through it, right? You can screen record if you want. I'll just skim through it. I'll try to read it as fast as possible. Um, I was like, when I gave you my vehicle, it was in perfect condition. You guys not only delivered the car a day late, a day and a half late, because what happened was that these fucking guys, so I had the location of the car, right? So they told me that the car would arrive on Tuesday. Tuesday, okay? Tell me why. It's like Tuesday at like 2, 3 p.m.-ish already. Oh, I can actually tell you the exact time. Look at this. 
I literally texted them at 3 16 p.m. And I said, do you guys have an ETA of when the car is going to be delivered? Right. Because the car alarm on my car went off in the morning on Tuesday. And I was like, what the heck? So I texted them. and I was like, you know what happened? They're like, the car's fine. At 3 p.m., I'm like, where's my car? Or do you guys know when my car's going to be delivered? Me thinking I'm going to get it that same day. And he was like, oh, uh, maybe tomorrow at 12. Maybe, to, like, what if I was leaving? Like, what if I had a job? Like, what if I had stuff to do? That was just so inconsiderate because they didn't even, they, if I don't ask at 4 p.m., they just wouldn't have told me it was going to be late. Anyways, I was like, oh, I can't. I have something to do tomorrow. Like, can you guys get here at 10? And he was like, we might be able to get there at 1, but I can't make no promises. Man just said 12. <laughs> he just said 12. And we, I had something to do. So I was like, I'm literally not going to be here. I was like, so just give me like an ETA. So the next day I messaged him. I'm like, oh, it's already going to, I think it was already 12 or 1 when I messaged him. I was like, do you have an ETA? Like, because I need to send someone to go sign it. I was going to send Jake to go sign on the vehicle. And this fucking guy, right? Just running in circles with me. Like, it's just so, so rude. He was like, I'll have an accurate ETA in around one and a half hours from now. So at 1, the time where he was going to deliver it, he was going to give me an ETA. <laughs> at 3.26 p.m., he says ETA 4 p.m. 3.26. Okay. And I was like, someone was there waiting for you guys already. Um. I thought you guys were going to be here at exactly 4 p.m. That I texted him at 4 because they said they were going to, they said ETA 4 p.m. So I texted him at 4. I was like, someone was there waiting for you guys already. I thought you guys would be here at 4 p.m. Please give me an exact ETA so I can plan accordingly. Because this guy, I have to send him to come sign. But they're telling me 4. I sent him at 4. They're not here. He has stuff to do. So he was like, oh, it's 5 p.m. Sorry, I was in another time zone. Knowing damn well he wasn't in another time zone <laughs> because I had his location. You he know was, what I mean? He was an hour and a half at like a, a repair shop. Like, we could we didn't know what was happening to the car. I thought uh, for like for a split second her car was getting parted and she got scammed. Dude, me too. <laughs> like for a second, I was a little scared. But to I be think- honest, with when we got the car and the mirror was broken, that made it sus. Cause like, what if they're replacing that brand new mirror? I mean, a brand not mirror, sorry, the speaker mm-hmm. with a brand new speaker with like an old speaker. Dude, I don't even know these guys. I expect the worst from them now. So, he, and then he's like fifteen minutes away, right? So anyway, guy ends up getting here at um. 4.50, okay? And so Jake, I was like, be late on purpose. I was like, get there. At f-. I told them that he would be here at 5.19. He could have got there at 5, but it was just like... <laughs> no, nah, I couldn't get there at 5. I was really busy. Oh, no, you couldn't. Mm-mm. No, you couldn't. Yeah, you're right. No, this guy literally couldn't make it in time, but it was just, they were so inconsiderate. They literally played games with me. They got it there at the next day at 5 p.m. when they initially said Tuesday, and then they didn't update me, and then it got there till the next day, and he kept moving the time, and that was just so inconsiderate of them, especially because I knew that they were only an hour away. They just weren't coming. For whatever reason, like, I get it, things happen, but he, they weren't updating me, and I think that was so rude. Anyway, so I said... You guys were not, not only did you guys deliver my car a day and a half late, which by the way, completely altered my plans and I did not get an update from you. I had to message you to find out (laughs) when the vehicle would arrive every single time, but you delivered my car completely dirty from the inside and the outside. Didn't even bother to clean it or at least tell me that it had happened. (laughs) They literally basically told him like, sorry, it just gets dirty. That's all. That's so rude. And they, they're rude. They, I know they were because when they picked it up, he was also just like in the worst attitude. My headliner is white and I can't just wipe it off. Like. What the hell? So I said, I understand the exterior gets dirty, but one thing is natural dirt from the road. And another thing is oil. There was what I can imagine oil stains. And if not, it's some kind of permanent stain. There's like permanent stains on my car, which I'm going to have to get rewrapped because whatever they did, like scratch the wrap and they, it was like oil. You and can't it tinted, wipe it off. It, tinted, it was like tinted scratches. So it's not like only scratching the wrap. It's like a different color than the white on her car. Yeah, it was just, and I said, this is not acceptable for the price I paid. I paid $1,300 to get the car shipped. Okay. And I get it. It's not uh, so much. That's a lot. No, that is a lot of money. Anyway, this is what he responded to me literally like five minutes later. <laughs> he said, you're welcome, period. We transferred your car perfectly. Even if we were late another day, we were still in a reasonable time frame. <laughs> Cars getting dirty is something normal. We did our best to keep it as clean as possible. Letting you know your car was paying the cheapest on my trailer. He sounds so dumb, bro. Explain to them why he sounds dumb right <sighs> Hold there. Hold up. I said, there's. he said, there's something called an enclosed service, which would cost you around 3 k for this transport, which I'm ensuring you will get dirty no matter what. That's basically like where they put it like in a semi-truck so that the dirt on the outside, like rocks and stuff, doesn't hit the car or anything, which is not the kind of dirt that I was talking about. Again, missing my point. I have picked and dropped your car off in a reasonable time frame, part two without any issues or damage. And this is how you respond. Have a great day, miss. (laughs) So this sent me on a, like, 
rampage because I was so upset that he could literally say, you're welcome. We got your car there. Like it's very much giving like the cheapest response in the world. Like he it's could have said sorry and I would have been fine. And it's unprofessionalism at his finest. Bro. He said miss. <laughs> That's so petty, dude. It, like it was just so frustrating, especially because we had such a good experience with the first guy. It's the same company, but they hire like independent people. And I was like, no way this fuck. He could have literally just said, I'm so sorry. You know, sorry for not wiping it down. Whatever. That would have been perfectly fine. But it was the fact that he, oh, the Corvette, the one on top. Okay, so they were transferring a Corvette on top and he had a car cover. But because I'm assured that the truck broke down, so they took all the cars out of the, the semi because they were all in different orders. Not like how we sent the cars. Like my car was first, but then when they got here, it was last. And like the cars on top were in different orders and stuff. So when they took the cars down, they put the cars back up and the Corvette wasn't covered. And I can bet money that the guy who shipped that Corvette told them to keep the cover on, but they didn't put it back on and they're going to put it back on when right they get there. Right before they get there, yep. I promise you that's what happened. And we and I were like, we got to get his number somehow. To snitch him out. I'm sure, Jake. I'm sure they but probably just didn't want to put it back on. this guy's business, it only has one review and it's a one star. And it's so a one So we should have yeah. known. I'm so mad. Anyway, this is my long ass paragraph that I replied because that was so rude that he literally said like, you're the cheapest car, like shut up basically. Like, I don't care if we got your car dirty. I said, the fact that you're running a business and responding like this is absolutely insane. Like I said, if you would have paid close attention to my text message, you would have understood the part where I said the interior was the <laughs> issue and the oil stains. I understand, quote, quote, I understand the exterior gets dirty, but one thing is natural dirt from the road and another is oil. Literally me five minutes ago. That's what I said, right? Because I literally, I didn't, you know, the enclosed trailer comment was so dumb. I'm sure my car paid the cheapest as it was the first car to get dropped off. It's basic math, but you're assuming that since my vehicle paid the least amount of money, it doesn't deserve to be treated with care is again insane. A thousand two hundred is not cheap and I am totally OK with paying for someone's time. But my issues come from the fact that there is no attention to detail. I am fully aware of what an enclosed transport is. I did not choose that route because I don't care about the dirt slash bugs slash water and natural dirtiness. My issue comes from the permanent stains that came from your dirty hands on the interior and the exterior. This would have had the same result in an enclosed trailer with you guys. Because that was so out of pocket for him to say that. Pay 3K for an enclosed trailer next time. You know? And like the, the price, that, I mean, the, the fact that you paid the cheapest price, but literally the other cars are going to Florida. No, they were going to Massachusetts. Oh my, see, even farther. So like, obviously my car was going to pay the least amount of time because mine was the closest. We were the first car to get dropped off. So like you saying you paid the least was so mean because it's like, yeah, my car was the closest one. It was Bro. just dumb for him to say that, you know? <laughs> that bothered me. I was like, why would you say that? I said, so yes, this is how I respond. I'm not happy with my service. And when I brought it to your attention, you responded in a completely unprofessional manner. A sorry for getting my, your interior dirty and not wiping it down would have gone a long way. What's done is done. I have hired a detailer to come fix the damage. The lack of accountability speaks volume for your company. Have a nice day, sir. I was so <laughs> mad. And after that, he didn't answer me anymore. But it was just like, they completely dirtied the inside of my car. Like they were stepping on, they were literally jumping on the seats. Okay, they got the entire headliner dirty. And then he said, well, we got your car there and you paid the cheapest. That was so rude. Anyway, yeah, that was our horror, horror story with my car. That was so bad, That dude. was so mean. But he was an asshole since the first time, Jake. He was late since the first. He told me he was going to get there. He didn't get there till two hours later. Dude. But like, yeah, speaking about the range, since we don't have it right now, what happened? Did you tell him what happened? With what? Oh, with the fuel and us no. all blowing up? No. Oh, that's another one? Yeah, yeah. Did you tell him that or no? We haven't talked about the fuel part. Okay, so yeah, we don't have the range right now. So right now we're just sticking it to my truck. But the reason why we thought we were going to die one day was because it smelled like like gas. Like we were at a gas station inside the car, full AC blasting, and I couldn't breathe. Like I was getting the biggest headache ever. But I was like, I asked Nat, hey Nat, do you smell that? It smells like gas, right? But she was on her phone doing something and she didn't hear me. I was like, oh, maybe it's just in my head. So like, I'm just like wandering, whatever, driving still. And I dropped her off at the store. And I'm staying parked in the car because I don't want to get off in the store, right? And like 10, 15 minutes pass by and Nat comes back to the car and she opens the car and she's like, wait, Jake, what did you say? Or I don't know what you I said. I said, get exactly. out of there. I'm not getting in that yeah, car. Get, and I'm like me sitting in the car for like the past 15 minutes smelling this. Jake, you could have passed out. And I was having the headache for the like, like 15 minutes, 30 minutes, bro. I swear. And I think after like the smell of any little like hints of gas just like went straight to my brain and I couldn't think. Yeah. I was like, I'm not getting in this car. You And we have fireworks in the car. 
dude, on top of... So, yeah, we thought the car was going to explode. So, we ended up asking for a tow truck. And tell me why the tow truck comes. And he doesn't know how to really, like, put the car on, let alone manage the vehicle. So, he was like, hold up. This should work. He, he like, ties the steering wheel or whatever. And then every time he tries to pull it up, the car uh, puts itself in, like, an auto park. And I guess there's a towing feature on, like, the range. But dude, we couldn't figure it out. Dude, this makes me so mad because, okay... The guy was so sweet, by the way. No so slander cool. on this guy. Like, I paid him for the full amount, even though he didn't end up towing the car because he was really cool and he really did give us his time. But did you tell him what kind of car it was when you called? I did, yeah. Okay, so that's when he should have known. So basically, when you tow a car, right, for, like, for example, if you park in a parking lot and you're not supposed to be parked there, they'll tow your car. But if it's an all-wheel drive car that you, like, can't put in manual or whatever, or if they don't have access to the inside, they'll put, like, something on the front tires to be able to tow your car out. Because it wasn't, like, the tow truck that, like, you put on the bed. It was the type of tow truck that with he, the like, long, long bed, the long metal bed that comes out. Oh, wait, wait, no, no. It was no, a tow, no, no. It was a tow truck the with the two hook. Yeah, the two hooks. It's like, it's like a... Imagine like you see like, on repos, the repo van. That's yeah, what yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was like little... So it hooks the back, but the front wheels are locked because my car is all-wheel driving. You can't put it in neutral because uh, my car basically goes in park every single time that... Like, like if you turn off the car, it goes in park. You can't just turn off the car and leave it in neutral. So this guy, he doesn't have the parts that will lift up the front two wheels so he couldn't take the vehicle does that make sense so what he was trying to do was leave the car on put it in neutral and then tie my seatbelt <laughs> around the steering wheel so that it wouldn't be moving because can you imagine he's trying to haul us and the wheels are moving like it's gonna something's bad it's gonna happen like base, you know so he like ties it around and he's like okay perfect and he's like yeah the last time that this happened with another girl she just went inside of the car and like she was, was holding she the steering wheel Holding the cereal and making sure it didn't go in the park. If, if if it went in the parking brake, then she'll take it off. <laughs> you know how illegal that is? Not even that. You know how unsafe that is? I was like, Jacob, you are not going in this car. It's like half up. Can you imagine that? And then someone's just like going against traffic, just like looking at the car behind him. So I was like, oh. and he was literally going to take it like this. And I told Jake, like something just doesn't feel right. Like I can't let this happen. If something if something happens, like this isn't a tow truck that I got through, you know, range. I can't even, you know, say you guys sent me a boo fast truck. So now you have to pay for my car being crashed. It's like, no, like we're literally doing this on our own. Like if something happens, I'm screwed, you know? And I was like, I'm, I, I was like, thank you so much. Like, I just don't feel comfortable. And he didn't even feel comfortable because he was like, no, no worries. We'll put it down. We'll put it down. No worries. <laughs> I know he was stressing, babe. He was. Dude, he, I'm glad he was like, uh, he gave us like the option to put it down. Cause he's like, no, I got it. I got it. If he was like fat in that. And saying he had the control, full control of the car, I would have been like... No, I would have not let him take my car. There's no way, Jake. I knew, I just didn't feel comfortable with it. And I was like, if something happens, I'll never forgive myself. Thankfully, so like, thankfully, we went back in the car and didn't smell like gas. Because it took like 30 minutes just to get it on the trailer. So, I mean, for him to get it hooked dude, up. Dude, so we're dying in the heat, right? This happened on 4th of July. We're dying. And I was like, no, can you just put my car back down? So he puts it back down, whatever. I pay him for the full amount. <laughs> and then... I call another tow truck through my range app or whatever, which took three hours to get here. But that's a whole other thing. We get into the car and we're like, I was told Jake, I was like, we're going to pass out if we stay out here because it was like 100 degrees and it was like 90% humidity, death. So I was like, Jake, just turn the damn car on. If it doesn't smell like gas, we're, we're driving off. So we open the car and it doesn't smell like gas anymore. And I, at first, my first thoughts were like, hold up, this is capping on us because as soon as I turn the car on, it's going to start smelling like gas. And we're like, and smelling nothing, no, no gas, no because gas. Because even when all. the car was off, it was smelling like gas. Remember, you would open it and be like, "Oh my!" And gosh. that's what was so weird. So we thought there was a gas leak in the beginning. Yeah, and I, he, Jake's like, "Let me turn it on." We turn it on, no gas. It's like this fucking car's gaslighting us. It's making us think that we never smelled it. But it did, <laughs> it's really trying to make us think that we never smelled it. But I swear we smelled it. Mm -hmm. Even the tow truck guy, he was like, "Oh my gosh, it doesn't smell anymore." Because when he first got there, he was like, oh, wow. Oh, oh, wow. He told Jake to move it back. He was scared to drive the car. He didn't want me. He didn't want to get in the car. He was like, if it blows up, you're going to die, not me. Yeah. He was like, can you move it back? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so we ended up like coming to a decision like, okay, we only have a 15 minute drive home. There's probably nothing wrong with it. It was like it. 10 minutes. And we were so frustrated that we honestly, I was like. Yeah, we were, we were, we'll explode and then let him take the car like this. And we are dying. We're like dehydrated. It's 4th of July. We're missing out on our time to be home and doing a cookout. Okay, it's already like 6 p.m. And we're pissed. We're driving the car, Jake. And we drove home. But <laughs> on the road home, we smell it again. And we're like, what could be the issue this time? But I'm like, all right, we're almost there. We have like five minutes left. So we go book it home. 
And we're like, all right, we got it home. Let's do what we got to do. We have to film. So we end up um, wanting to do burgers. So we cut up the meat, prepare everything, get our... Oh, we actually bought fireworks, We're still waiting for the tow truck in this moment because, remember, it took three hours. So we bring it home, and then we change the location to pick up at the Airbnb versus at the middle of a random parking lot. So, yeah, we're doing... We're about to do burgers. I'm trying to light the grill, and a thunderstorm comes. And I'm like, hold up, no way. So I'm trying to start this fire for at least an hour, nonstop. I'm changing out the car, the charcoal, putting new ones and lighting it up and everything. And I go to the store, buy new charcoal and just try to light it up. But the rain just like tumbles and like rains all over my charcoal. And I was so freaking sad. The hardest sad rain ever, guys. And it happened like within, it was sunny and then boom, thunder. And I was like, dude, there goes our 4th of July barbecue and we're going to cook burgers inside. But thankfully, we came to a conclusion to get burgers because you can't have a 4th of July without hot dogs or burgers. And we ended up going to Whataburger. Dude, after like, <laughs> dude, the car took a shit on us. Like the grill took a shit on us. Like me and Jake were just like, we should just get takeout and go to bed. Like, so we're, we having a, <laughs> we're having a horrible couple past couple of days. Dude, dude. It was great. And it was our first holiday alone, you guys. Like we're alone and we, we bought fireworks. We're like, we're going to literally light them. We honestly, though, Jake, it was one of my favorite 4th of July. Me because too, because we're learning. It was just so much. It was like everything that could go wrong went wrong. But like <laughs> it was nice. You know, we ended up lighting some fireworks. We did sparklers. Um, Ellie and Thea were just kind of like in here because they didn't like the noise. And we came back inside. Jake went to go get Whataburger. And we laid on the couch and we watched Heartland. So it ended up being a, a good day. It was actually a really crazy culture shock. Where like, I guess, I guess you could say culture shock, but not really culture wise. That I came to a place where they have a fireworks store and they don't just sell like sparklers or the ones that just like a fountain like fountain fireworks. They sell like literal fireworks that shoot up in the air. And I was going to ask if they're legal here, but in Tennessee, I guess fireworks are legal. So they just go all out. They could have all the cool stuff that they want. And I'm used to the California stuff only having like little fountains and sparklers. We were never like into fireworks. So I, I don't remember like, that wasn't really, I didn't even go into the fireworks store, but when Jake lit them that night, I was like, oh, this is so much fun. It's just being safe about it. Cause even that lit one. Yeah. Because you know what? I just have such a bad experience with fireworks because the one time, so my parents are super against fireworks because of this. So one time we went to a family yeah. member's house mm -hmm. to light fireworks and they were lighting. It's just, my cousins are just wild. So they were lighting the fucking fireworks and the people from the back, my cousins from the back were like, shoot, it's the ones that you hold in it like shoots. And they were like grazing the back of our head because they were right behind oh us. They, we, you know, they were just kids. But my dad after that was like, never again. Like they were blowing everywhere. Like they sent one up on the bottom and it like fell and shot into the house. And like, you know, and my parents have always been really paranoid. And honestly, after that experience, I was like, yeah, this is maybe not so <laughs> safe. So I ne we never did it again. But again, it's just... They weren't doing things with caution. Doing yeah. things with caution is different. Yeah, those Roman candles are, like, really fun to play with, but they're very dangerous. But that's completely different than getting, like, mortars that you're not supposed to hold in your hand and having those in your hand, dude. No, yeah. Because those could explode. They can't, like, they will uh, have malfunctions where they don't shoot up in the air and they actually explode here. No, and it's just, like, being with the right crowd. Exactly. And, and doing things right. You know what I mean? Like, dude, the amount of videos I saw where, like, all these friends are, like, in a house and blowing shit at each other. Like, that's just... You got to like be around the right crowd and do things safely. But with you, it was really cool because we lit them and then we would run and then it'd go boom in the air. And it was so much fun. Yeah, it was actually my first time lighting fireworks by myself. So it was a really cool experience. It was so much yeah. fun. And we did sparklers and, and it was a really fun time. It really was. Nat took some fire Instagram photos. So go check those out if you haven't already. If you're brand new here, follow Nat. Follow me. Talking we got fire about Instagram pictures. fire Instagram pictures. So we're going to address the little elephant in the room. <laughs> So the la I think it was the last podcast or the podcast before that we were talking about. Before. Yeah, we were talking about like I took some fire pictures and Nat's like, what are you posing for? Why are you taking off your life jacket? So many people got offended. Dude, people <laughs> ran. That was a joke. <laughs> I don't mind what he put. No, wait, now people are going to actually think I like. I'm You're switching sides. Oh, my God. <laughs> anyway, he posted the pictures and I was like, should I comment or not? Because if I comment, I could like totally like be petty about it but i was like you know what i'm not gonna comment so that people could think i'm mad and it could get like more traction and, dude it's so funny because people caught on like you didn't like it or comment 
<laughs> but I was like liking everybody's comments. Yeah, you're, like, you're active in the comments. It's so funny. Yeah, and I was like, I'm not going to comment so that people could be like, oh, Nat didn't comment. And like, it could give your post more um, attraction. But it's like, do people <laughs> actually thought that I was being serious about that? Nah, y'all are foul though because y'all were taking Nat's side instead of mine, bruh. <laughs> Everyone, like there was people commenting but weren't liking the post because they're like, nah, it feels illegal liking this. <laughs> <laughs> You guys are I hilarious. love you guys. But I was so much. Fun. No, guys, please go give uh, Jake's picture a like. It's so funny. You're literally wearing a muscle shirt. I was just being serious. Like, if I don't act jealous once in a while, Jake, you're gonna think I don't like you because I, was, I never act. Nat's up. not jealous, bro. I was wearing a muscle shirt with no muscles. Why, what would she be jealous about? No, I'm sure. Like, there's a toxicity that could be going on there. Old Nat would have totally been so toxic about that. Really, you would have. I'm glad you changed. See, but you, you could- don't give me an opportunity, like. There's no reason to be jealous. Like the only way that I would be jealous, right, is if you were engaging with girls hitting you up. For example, like if someone part- puts hard eyes and I'm like, thank you. Yes. <laughs> or like, if, for example, if people were like hyping you up and it like got to your head so bad that you were like responding back to these girls, then I'd be like, why are you posting? Them? Because you're looking for attention. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. But you don't give me a reason to be jealous you don't give me the time to um get insecure about it so there's no reason to be jealous but again if i act too unbothered like you're really gonna start thinking i don't like you Mm -hmm. because i feel like sometimes i get that way i'm like does he even like me maybe it's just an insecurity thing yeah that's that goes back to what we were talking about last time like sometimes i just play around and act uh toxic to you but it just shows like i'm just playing around with you but i do care for you because if i'm not toxic if i'm like why are you wearing that shirt? You can see your tits too much. If I don't say that at all. Like never. I'm going to. She's like, does he does he like my tits? <laughs> like, does is he like, you know, any protective at all? Like you have to play a little bit into it to make sure your partner's like. And I'm not saying toxic, right? Like, but to each their own. I know some girls like, I want him to strangle me. That, Jacob, what? That's something completely different. We're talking <laughs> about wearing clothes. What the fuck are you talking about? No, it's because I see people like if he's not if he's not uh, not grabbing me like this, and I don't want it. We're talking about clothing. Games. Exactly. No, 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 no. But like, okay. I'm not talking about nothing nasty. <laughs> I'm not talking about. Reset. I'm talking about like I want. Okay, okay. Reset. Reset. We're talking about clothing, right? Like, if they don't let you go out with a crop top and jeans, like you got you. There's problems going on there, you know. <laughs> yeah, but if you took this to a completely different place, but I didn't mean to. <laughs> I swear, I swear that's not what I meant at all. Um, anyway, yeah, so that was all a joke, you guys. It was it was it was a joke, okay? Please. I feel like we've pretty much done a pretty good job at like really blocking everybody that always takes offense to everything because I would hate to have an audience who's like bunch of little ass babies. Um we've done a pretty good job, but I feel like sometimes they still pop out. I'm like, how? Like they're just like little gremlins growing from the ground. They keep growing. I don't <laughs> understand. Like I feel like on our podcast we're always just like speaking out of our ass. And uh-huh. like usually for the most part like they know we're kidding, but sometimes they just be popping out. Just when I think we've cleared the seed. <laughs> another one grows another one grows. I'm like, damn it. <laughs> nah, that's funny though. You were she didn't really care about like about me wearing that in the beginning, so no, I was just trying to be an ass because he never wears it. I always tell you to take off your shirt when we go in the pool, and if he doesn't have like a water shirt, he won't get in the pool. Hence, why he didn't get in the pool with me in Missouri. Nah, I just didn't want that, but I also just didn't want to get in the water. It was warm outside, and then it was also heated. So it was not warm outside. It was, it was cold as shit. It outside. was not cold. Yeah, Jake's not really like the type to swim anyway. I'm not a swimmer. I'm out. I'll be outdoorsy, but not swimming. I know. He always just watches me do it. And I'm like, mm. by the way, right now I'm like itching my calves because I am literally torn up by so many bug bites. Tennessee, y'all are built different. Y'all probably have like immunity to being bit by bugs. You good? Yeah, I'm good. Sorry, I just got a bad text. Um, oh, shoot. <laughs> just the freaking worst. Um, anyways, moving forward, we... oh. I have Sorry. a good topic now. Okay. Okay, moving forward, how do you guys stay positive when bad stuff keeps happening in your life? How do you, like, stay positive when bad stuff keep ha- keeps happening in your life? I don't know. You really don't know? Mm-mm. Like, did you ever, like, stress? You're ever anxious? Yeah, I couldn't sleep last night. You couldn't sleep last night? Do you know why you have anxiety? Well, yeah, you know why. No, I know, but do you know why, like, other things, why other things cause anxiety and well, stuff? okay. So... Let me put this in, in a good perspective. I feel like things don't bother me as bad anymore, like general things. Like, for example, if that shit about the fuel pump would have happened to me like f- three years ago, I'd, I would have started crying, like actually. Remember when my tire popped in Bakersfield and I just started crying because I yeah. didn't know what to do? I just ran into panic. Uh-huh. But I feel like so much stuff has happened to me that like 
my car blowing up does not sound that bad. Like, because <laughs> such bad things. Oh my gosh, I never told you guys about this. One time I had a freaking bank fraud of $80,000. Like this is stuff that you guys obviously don't know, but like I lost $80,000 for months, you guys, from a bank fraud. I remember this. I woke up in a panic. That was like, so things like, that have happened to me so like such real life scenarios have happened to me that i feel like little things don't affect me as bad anymore because i'm like it's just i don't even know how to <laughs> it's explain it's like the littlest of the little that's already happened no literally like because once your issues start to get bigger like a lot of people i feel like when you're first starting to get into your big girl issues right things seem so big and my issues that I have right now are probably so small to someone who's like 30 years old right but as you start experiencing more and more issues in life like you start to be able to learn how to handle them a lot better like I used to have the worst anxiety when it came to like anything before like anything that happened like I'd be like oh my gosh like I would get so anxious about it like something just happened to us um a month ago or like a month and a half ago um where we got like that, that those really bad news. And like, Jake, I was stressed out for like a whole week. Like you guys saw it in my vlogs where I was like, oh, like I'm going to get through it or whatever. Like that really, really, really hurt. And it was really hard. But if that were to happen to me again. You think you'll take it, take it very lightly? Yes. It's because it's like, I already went through that. Like I know how to do it. I know how to figure it out. Like I'll be okay. You know what I mean? So do you think you also like, since the, the, like little things happen, do you think something in the future is going to be very big? That's going to happen. That make all these all little, of, yeah. 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 So you prepare yourself with bigger things that are going to be worse than this. Well, I, I think it's just hard because like, for example, when, well, I don't, I don't really want to talk about that. I don't want to bring that up on the podcast, but like, for example, when the bank fraud thing happened, right? I've had so many other little frauds happen to me now that are just like, whatever, like this will get sorted out. Literally 20 or 30, no, no, like 45 minutes ago, someone tried to log in your uh, Amazon account. Dude, not <laughs> even just that, but like I literally just saw a enormous amount of money leave my bank account right now. And I was like, okay, what is this? Like, it was like, I handled that better than I did when I lost those $80,000, which by the way, like that's a whole other story, like bank stuff. Please don't even keep your money in a bank. Keep that shit cash under your bed because <laughs> no, they, they will take it from you so easily. Like guys, it took me months to get that money back in. Like I'm so grateful to have multiple accounts. Like I didn't just have that account. I have multiple accounts. But what so, if that like, was only your, that was all your income. Those were all your eggs in that basket. Imagine that. Dude, I wouldn't have been able to pay my bills. Like I have built, like I have a mortgage. I have all these payments. Like, can you imagine, right? If that, whatever that fraud happened, right? And it would have been all of my money. The bank won't give you any money. Like, for example, if I think it's under 10000 it might be less. Every bank is different. But my bank won't give you, like, if the amount that was in fraud is, like, over a certain threshold, which I think it's 10000 but it could be less, they don't give you that money back until the investigation is done. So what happens is, like, when you have a fraud like that, um, let's say somebody stole, like, 800 bucks from your account, right? They'll give you that money, and then they're investigating it. Does that make sense? So they'll give it to you because you, you're like, oh, this is fraud. This isn't me or whatever. But if it's a small enough balance, they'll like give it to you. And then it's a whole investigation that happens. And then once you're cleared, whatever, it's yours. But if it isn't, then they'll take it back. But they'll give it to you. So like you're fine. You'll be able to pay your payments. But because this was $80,000, they, they don't give you that money. Like they won't give you that credit. You're just shit out of luck. Like, sorry, you, we can't give you that money. So I have to wait months to get that money back. And I was starting to stress. I remember because we didn't know if you were going to get that money back. That's what was scary because like I wasn't guilty of that, right? It was a literal fraud. But how do I prove it? Because of the way that the fraud happened. So I was so stressed out. I remember I was crying like every night and like I didn't tell anybody. Like I think I just told my parents not that long ago, but I didn't tell anybody and I was just like so stressed out about that and like it was getting to the point where it was like, dude, I, I'm still paying my bills, but I'm not getting my money. Like they literally, thankfully I had, you know, the other accounts where I have money saved up just, you know, emergencies. But can you imagine what would have happened if like I didn't have extra money, Jake? I'd be so screwed. And I have you obviously mm -hmm. for the backup, but it was just so bad. And it was like the worst time in my life. I was having all that to deal with and it was so bad. So I think now whenever like little minor, like what's been happening lately, like so minor compared to all of this shit that we go through that I need to just calm. Mm -hmm. And that's what I was reminding myself last night when I was like laying. On, remember when I was laying on you and then you gave me a hug afterward and through my head, like I was just like, Nat, you've been through so like 
you have figured out things that I don't know how you figured them out. Like, is this really something that's going to not let you sleep? Like, I need my sleep. You're like, you need to work tomorrow and go to sleep. I woke up feeling better today. And then that TikTok that I posted, I was just reading all the comments. And I was like, literally so many people love me. Like, why am I letting myself, like, be, have anxiety over dumb stuff? You know, like, yeah. you're, you're great. Like, you need to keep pushing through. Exactly. You have to keep motivating yourself and telling yourself, like, what you're worth and the uh, like the little little things will matter and like mm -hmm. well no no the little things will mean nothing to you i always so i saw this like quote on instagram uh, i think a while ago where it was like if you can't do anything anything about it in an hour or what is the quote something like if you have no control over it like in 10 years or something it's a quote where it's basically like if you can't change it if it won't make a difference in five years or 10 years or whatever and if you have no control over it like stop stressing about it i feel like that's really changed my life but when it comes to like money that's different because <laughs> it will have an impact but we are actually going to be making a video soon where we lost a really big chunk of money jake lost a really big chunk of money <laughs> <laughs> guys why does this stuff always happen to us we it's, if it's not you it's me if it's not me it's you the but, biggest but, chunk of money. But I think everything does happen for a reason because with us losing this amount of money, we're going to be able to influence them in so many ways and tell them about so many different Dude, things we can I'm, do. Dude, we're going to change their life when we tell that story. It's like uh, we're paying for a professional course without paying for a course, bro. Dude, you're paying for life experience, literally. <laughs> like, But we're going to save you guys from that trouble when we drop that video. Like, And I hope you guys learn something from it because we have learned the biggest lesson of our life and we're going to be entering a huge project that's probably going to take up around two years of our life. And we're going to learn so much from that. And we're also going to share it with you guys because honestly, anything that we can share to help you guys grow is gold. Like we're going to try to share everything with you guys and get you somewhere. It, it literally like it costs you nothing but your time for you to support us. And we appreciate that so much. But by also doing that, we also take the risks and like all that stuff for yeah, you guys. So just stay dumb. tuned to the podcast. This is, the, this is like where most of our behind the scenes stuff happens. So, But you know what? I love us. We're so innocent. Like we're just dumb. <laughs> what did we do to deserve this, Dude, bro? We're just dumb. And we, we we're so like, ah, uh, like that was such a rookie mistake. Rookie mistake, please don't ever. When we tell you guys that story, which are, it'll come be coming out when I think like in a next month, month and a half. In a month, and, if all goes well, we'll be able to tell that story. <laughs> but we, uh, I have to fly back to California next week to go deal with all that, which I'll be vlogging it. And I'm super excited. Uh, we're gonna fly back to California. We as no me, I'm flying back. He's staying down to hold the fort down with the kids because we don't. One of us has to stay here. Someone has to stay, so I'm just gonna go back to Cali um, and get that all figured out. And that'll be a whole thing that we're going to share with you guys. And it's going to be a whole, I just don't, I'm not looking forward to dealing with that. It's like, I, I keep putting it off because I don't want to deal with it, but I need to, because if not, we're going to lose another $8,000 <laughs> in the next week, babe. So we have to do it now. <laughs> yeah, let's oh do it Oh my gosh. So much stuff, you guys. You know what's crazy? So yesterday when we were, sorry, we're entering a whole other topic, you guys, we've just been blabbing to you. We were literally talking about on our way home yesterday, we went to Kroger. Yeah. And we were driving home and I was telling Jake, I was like, we started off, like we're at like two out of 10 or where we want to be in life, right? We have big ambitions. And it's crazy that step one was like getting us to a position where we can fund step two. Fund step two. So I feel like now we're in step two. And it's crazy that we've been doing, well, I've been doing this for seven years. Yeah, I've been doing YouTube for seven years, right? So it took me seven years to get to two out of 10. And that's with your help coming along at like year four. So it's like, it took us this long to get to step two. Like, can you imagine usually like how long it's going to take us to take, to get to step 10? But I heard it also, it's like, it's different. I hear rich people say this all the time. I think it's like, it's harder to make a hundred thousand dollars than it is to make a million dollars no i heard it's hard the hardest money to make is oh yeah 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 a right? hundred thousand versus a million yeah and, and I, I agree I, dude i agree because you could do so much with the, that one hundred thousand dollars after you get it but it takes a grind to get the one hundred thousand dollars right once i feel like you're right and you're that's right. so true you're right yeah because then you can invest it versus like getting to the 100 it's like an investment on ten dollars is obviously not gonna make it. that's so true I wonder how it works in millions. Like making your first million is probably the hardest. And then after that, it's easier. Oh, yeah. There's different scales to it. Making your first hundred dollars is harder than making after you make a thousand. Then you could do. Dude, you know what's the little dividends? You want to know what money made me like the Realize? happiest in okay. the entire world? What money? Ten thousand dollars. Really? Mm -hmm. When I made ten thousand dollars, I was like, what is life? <laughs> 
What is life? That is the most life changing amount. Ten thousand dollars. I think, I think I mine wasn't ten thousand dollars, but I remember I had seven thousand dollars, and I looked at my bank account. And I was like, "Holy mm -hmm. shit!" But I do regret doing this. I messed up. So I think it's like the next month I got, in total of my bank account, I had I think twelve thousand dollars or thirteen thousand dollars, and that's when I bought my car, and I put a six thousand dollar car payment. So fifty percent <laughs> of my money literally went to a car. And I regret that so much. And I wish I could tell myself, like, why would you do that? You should have just got a beater car. It's like $200 a month or something like that. Mm -hmm. You know, I just. You learn. You learn. And these are the things that we do you try to you tell learn. you guys. Like, we don't know your bank account status, but we could give you the, our experience because we've been in, like, most of you guys' footsteps. And For the younger people. Yeah, for the younger people. Because, I don't know, I, if I would have, I think I would have taken my advice. I think Babe, so. Babe, but you know what? I th uh, correct. I don't think that getting the Mazda was a, a good um, decision. And I told you about that, but whatever. I'm going to move past that. I'm glad it was a Mazda, though, than a Mustang. Yeah, you'd be so screwed. No, but you know what? That car, Jake, it built us what we have because you were able to come towards me. And those videos where you started coming towards me got us our Jadley audience. And that's why we are where we are today. So it was for sure like we knew you needed a car. Now, could you have made a better decision on the vehicle that you purchased? Yes, right? It could have been a cheaper vehicle. But... I, I, I don't I don't think you should regret it because it truly changed our life. Not only a cheaper vehicle, it could have there could have been different circumstances. Like I could have been smarter and went through a car broker and I yeah. couldn't I didn't have to put six thousand dollars down. Maybe I put like seven hundred dollars down mm -hmm. and get the same car. I agree, yeah. You live and you learn, dude. You live and you learn and you gotta pick up these things. You know what's crazy? So I saw this person talk about how like we were out of touch because we said that making a hundred thousand dollars like you don't live comfortably. Dude. How is that a lot? Like, okay, let me explain something to you. First of all, I said comfortably, not that you couldn't live, but $100,000 today, it, it's not what it was. Like, I remember when we were in school, I used to be like, I want to be, I want to make $100,000 a year. That's like um, $500,000 nowadays. Like, I remember I used to be like, if I can make $100,000 a year, like, I'll be so happy. I'll have my beautiful two-story house, like, and I'll live happily ever after. That is not reality anymore dude taxes are gonna take like 30 percent of that you're left with 70 like your average apartment in california this is all california by the way i'm sure that would work somewhere else but like how are you making a hundred thousand dollars in a lower state you'd have to do like I, I don't even know but i'm saying for california california has the biggest state income tax it's either california or um New York, but I'm pretty sure it's California who has the highest state income tax. Yeah, like 22% or something. I don't no, know. No, no, it's, it is. It's, uh, I mean, sorry, that's the tax bracket. No, thingy. no, no, that's not. I think it's uh, 11. I'm not, it has the highest state income tax, right? So it's like you're paying so much money in taxes. And if you're self-employed, you understand, like, they'll literally take almost half of your money. Almost half of your money. And then after that, you have to get health care because Chances are, if you're making 100K, they're not going to give you health care. Like, trust me, I pay so much money in health care a month. It's actually ridiculous. I need to go to the doctor just to use my points up. <laughs> and Do a checkup on me real quick. For real. I need to use it. I haven't been to the doctor because I never had insurance and I didn't want to pay for it. But now I have insurance, so I should. Because <laughs> you also will get freaking fined if you don't have insurance. That's a whole other thing. But it's like they're taking like 40 to 30%, even 50% of your taxes, right? Depends what you do. But they're going to take all that. And then your average apartment is not going to go under $2,000 in California. Like, Literally does not remember we were looking and that was like two years ago. We couldn't find at least in Southern California. You could cheapest, not find it. The cheapest we found, I think it was like 2,500, 2,400. No, no, no. Yours was 23. No, but we, we ended up going to a different area. You're right. Where we were initially looking, it was so expensive. And then we went like further out and then it was cheaper. You're right. So all the apartments are going to bring you like 2,000. And that's like not even a nice apartment. If you want like a nice, nice apartment, start at 3,000. Literally start or like high twos. And if you do the math on that on a year, like that's probably going to run you like between 25K plus. What are you left with? 40K? 50K? And that's without you already paying your bills every month. That's without bills, food. car, food. Food is so expensive. Like if you try to buy anything at the store, it's so, so, so pricey. And you're not even adding fun time into there. Like you will live, but you're not going to live comfortably. Like people go to school for years to make $100,000. And it's so sad that they don't even get to experience life and that's without kids now imagine having kids or and a dog I, and i think at the one hundred thousand dollar mark you're already in a different tax bracket so on top of like all the money you're, you're making correct dude, yes it's because like 
They make I you feel like you have money, but you don't. You could like let me know if I'm wrong, but I think you're making um I think forty thousand dollars compared to like fifty thousand dollars, even though it's a ten thousand dollar difference. Oh yeah, the whole tax brackets yeah. and different yeah. That but you know what it is? We, if you're self employed, Jake, you're getting fucked regardless. It doesn't even matter. In California, at least. You're literally going to get fucked. It doesn't matter if you're married, not married, have kids, don't have kids. It doesn't matter. You're so screwed anyway. But it's just so sad that, you know, people I feel like still, people who don't live in California mainly, like people who don't live in California run with the fact that 100K will make you like a nice life. Like you will be able to go on vacations and you'll be able to have the nicest cars and the nicest house. Like in California, having 100K is like, nothing like because they tax you at least like half of that so it's just it's so sad but that's just what and it is. people will always take this the wrong way i don't understand why because yeah. truthfully everything we're telling you is like honest and we're not trying to like make a hundred thousand dollars seems like a little bit a little bit amount of money but in the state that we live in in our market that we are mm -hmm. in right now it's just not enough money to fund a lot of a, your a things good, a good what is it a comfortable lifestyle mm -hmm. you'll live but you're not going to be comfortable like not worrying about you know Oh, I could take a day off of work. You're not going to live like that. It freaking sucks so bad. It sucks so bad, but that's just the way it is. And people will always take that the wrong way because people who make less money are always like, well, I live with this and you guys are out of touch. It's like, <sighs> you know what? People who don't believe that, that's fine. But chances are you either don't live in California. <laughs> you're not paying your taxes. You, you just don't have ambitions, whatever the case is. But yeah, 100K is not the nice, nice neighborhood that you would get when you were younger. I remember thinking about 100K like, wow, when did it change? Growing up, I always thought it was like the biggest amount in the world. And then Uncle Sam comes at the end of the year knocking on your door. 40K. <laughs> if you're good, if that's like a good amount. Dude, I'm tired. I'm tired of this grandpa. <laughs> yeah. And you know what's crazy? That we're like, we don't make little enough to like get tax breaks, but we make, but we don't make enough to make tax breaks <laughs> so we pay so much taxes because we're in that beautiful in between oh and we're not married and we don't have kids and we're, we're just uncle sam loves us and we live in california another thing is like when you find out you're making a hundred thousand dollars you want that nice car you want those nice houses and stuff so you end up getting them and it's just like yeah you start to upgrade your lifestyle as you make more money so you're technically not making more money because you're spending it all yes correct that also plays a huge role it's annoying but also you think oh i'm making 100k so i can afford it but it's like no you're really making like 70 and 60k because taxes and it gets me mad at the systems uh, the school systems because this is the stuff that they need to teach you in life rather than i guess like a, with an art class bro i i promise you unless you're an artist and who what, what class would you rather take a, like a extra economical class or an art class no obviously an extra i literally was in business class in high school and i didn't learn shit <laughs> i was in business class i was and the lady who was teaching it had a business herself but i don't have one critical good skill from that class i can't start a business right now i don't know how i would have to take courses so it's like oh i hate school i hate school so bad because of that it makes me so mad i don't know about college but high school was the most biggest waste of my time and i was a good student okay i had honors classes i had ap classes like i was a good kid i did school i graduated okay i did it all but I don't have good, I don't have anything that I retain from it. Me neither. Maybe my, my reading level, not enough. I feel like that's declined still, but I don't remember math. I don't use math nowadays. And that's I mean, what stressed me out know. the most. I know it's good to know, but at the same time, like I wish that they would offer more real life. I wonder if there is something out there, like a private school that actually teaches kids how to be rich. But honestly, I think it comes from your parents being smart and rich and that's how you get smart and rich. And it's just... That's my biggest goal is to be smart and yeah, rich. Yeah, because if your parents were smart that. and rich, they would have taught you how to do everything. Mm -hmm. Like, And you would have gone from step one to step two yeah. easily. Yeah, my parents have the entire work ethic for it. They have the drive for it. They just don't have the knowledge for it. And the knowledge isn't easy in the United States. You can't get the knowledge. Oh, They change, they change laws every like every other month, dude. Dude, it makes me so mad. I can't keep up. <laughs> now, now we're going to have to be paying 90 cents per gallon of gas or something. Oh, because we don't have an electric vehicle? <laughs> that one law that's supposed to go, I'm done. It's our fault because we're dumb and we're still living in California. At, till this day, we're still falling into the scams. Oh, my gosh. Anyway, that's enough financial talk for a while. I was, um, I got so many messages about how you guys love listening to the podcast because of this and it motivates me so much to keep filming these so if there's something that you take away from this podcast please please comment it and let us know that you're enjoying it because it really does motivate that's us. the only thing keeping me sane from losing x amount of money 
to give you guys the knowledge. That's the only thing giving me saying, I promise. Yeah, we're trying to figure out how that's even going to work out. It's a whole thing. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this episode. We are going to wrap it up here because uh, it's already really, really long. <laughs> it's, long it's on the longer end of our podcast, but yeah. stay tuned. We have something coming to you very, very soon. A special launch. You guys are going to be excited, especially for those outdoorsy travel or... I don't know. I feel like always on the road. Yeah, always on the road type of people that listen to podcasts. Stay tuned. We have something super, super tuned for you. But if you're not having a great day, I hope you had a great day. If you didn't enjoy this podcast, listen to another one. Thank you so much for watching this pod, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.